Dilutions and solutions to weakiometry be the two topics we cover in this lesson, and we're in the second lesson of three and a whole chapter on solutions. In the last lesson, we covered some vocab, and we talked about the different units for measuring concentration. But in this one again, dilutions and solutions to weakiometry. Now, this lesson's part of my high school chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so a dilution, and a dilution is simply when we make a solute go from more concentrated to less concentrated. And generally, this happens when you add more solvent, but the truth is it means you could add more of just about anything that's not the solute, which just usually is going to be the solvent. Uh, so give me, let me give you an example. So let's say that I really like Kool-Aid. And so because I like Kool-Aid so much, so that I, you know, get a pitcher and I fill it full of water, and instead of pouring one packet in, I pour in 30 packets over and over. Because I'm like, I like Kool-Aid, let's make it good. And so I pour in a ton of Kool-Aid. So, and unfortunately, I taste that Kool-Aid and it is strong and it is way too strong. And so what do I do? I throw it away. No, that would be a waste. So what do I do is I go to my bathroom and I pour it in my bathtub and turn on the tub. So, and I add a bunch more water and pretty soon I've got a, you know, a whole tub full of Kool-Aid and I take a glass and I drink it because that's really disgusting, but that's what I do. And I drink it. It's a brand new tub. I just put it in. Maybe that's what we'll pretend. So, but I drink that Kool-Aid right out of the tub and ah, that's good Kool-Aid. And so what I've just done there is a dilution. And so my question for you is, if you recall, how many packets of Kool-Aid did I stick in my pitcher? And hopefully you remember that I said 30. And my next question for you is, how many packets of Kool-Aid ended up in my bathtub? still 30 because the key is in performing a dilution I didn't add any more Kool-Aid. The 30 packets that ended up in my pitcher are the same 30 packets that ended up in my tub and that's the key here is with a dilution you're not adding any more solute you're only adding solvent and again you might be adding some other solutes like instead of just you know pure water maybe I added salt water or sugar water you know something along those lines I'm still diluting the Kool-Aid and so I'm still adding solvent that may or may not have other solutes in it, so but it doesn't have more Kool-Aid in it. And so what's going on here is you could look at this and say that the moles of solute that you start with in a typical dilution are going to equal the moles of solute that you end with in the dilution. So one way to look at that. So before and after. Well, if you recall, molarity is equal to the moles of solute over the volume in liters of the solution. And if you rearrange this and solve for that moles right there, you'll find that moles equals molarity times the volume in liters. And if we take that molarity times volume in liters and substitute it into this expression here, we get the classic dilution equation. M1V1 equals M2V2, where M stands for uh, molarity, and we have initial molarity, final molarity, and then V stands for volume, initial volume, final volume. So that's the equation here. So, And even though we've derived it using the definition of molarity and stuff like this, it turns out you can actually use this kind of an equation for any unit of concentration. So oftentimes you'll see this rewritten as C1V1 equals C2V2, so because we don't have to use molarity, we can use any unit of concentration, they do so. So we can use mass percents, we can use molality, we can use mole fractions. Any unit of concentration can actually be used in this kind of analogous expression. Now, one thing you should note about the dilution equation, if you want this to work out, so you need to use the same units on both sides. So you need to use the same units of concentration on both sides. If you use molarity on the left, you need to use molarity on the right. If you use molality on the left, you need to use molality on the right. Same thing for volume. If you're using milliliters on the left, you need to use milliliters on the right. And again, I know that we derive this using the volume in liters as part of the definition of molarity. But again, the truth is, as long as you use the same units on both sides, they're going to cancel. And so in this case, whether that's milliliters on both sides, liters on both sides, picoliters on both sides, it does not matter. As long as you're consistent using the same units on both sides, the equation will work. All right, one last thing too is that, again, V1 is your initial volume, V2 is your final volume, and again, what you need to remember about V2, it is, is the total volume of solution. It's not how much more solvent you added, it's the total volume of the entire solution. So both the original amount of solution plus the amount of solvent you added combined, that's what that V2 is, total volume of the final, you know, of the solution 
in the end. So let's take a look at the problem we're going to do. And we've got 10 milliliters of 0.4 molar NaCl. And we are going to, it's going to be diluted to a total volume of 40 milliliters. So, and I, I kind of phrase this the, the way we often do. It's being diluted to a total volume. And I think I actually put 40.0 milliliters. And so I tried to add appropriate numbers of decimals. And I think I probably added something like 10.0 milliliters here and stuff, just so we could get some extra sig figs and stuff. But uh, we'll just kind of do this in three sig figs and be done with it there. All right, so if we look at this here, so oftentimes we'll give you that it's the total final volume. That way it's clear that we're giving you V2. And that's the case here. So we're saying diluted to a total volume of 40 milliliters, what is its final concentration? And you can kind of see what's going on here. If we're going from 10 milliliters to a total of 40 milliliters, we're ending up with quadruple the volume, four times more volume. And if you end up with four times more volume, you're going to find out you get four times less concentrated. That's actually what this kind of equation ultimately means. So quadruple the volume, it actually cuts the concentration in fourth. So whether you realize that or not, if you plug it into the equation, it'll give it to you anyway. So we'll take the initial vol uh, molarity, M1, 0.40 molar times the initial volume, 10 milliliters. Final molarity is what we're trying to solve for. And our final total volume is 40 milliliters. Cool. We'll take 0.4 times 10, which will give us four. And then we'll divide by 40, which is going to give us 0.1. And so we'll find that M2 equals 0.1 molar. And the truth is, I guess we could, I said three sig figs, didn't I? Okay. 0.100 molar. Cool. And just like we said, because the volume got four times greater, the molarity in going from 0.4 to 0.1 got four times smaller. Now, just so you've seen it both ways here. So I give you another question that says, if 40 milliliters of water is added to 10 milliliters of 0.4 molar NaCl, what is the final concentration? And so I just wanted you to see the difference here, because if I'm adding 40 milliliters of water now, well, that means my 10 milliliters by the time I add an additional 40 milliliters is going to add, end up with a total volume of 50 milliliters. And so I just want to make you sure you see it both ways. Sometimes they give you the total volume like we did in the first example. And sometimes they tell you how much solvent is added, like in the second one here. And so in this case, we'd have to know that V2 is not 40, not the additional amount of solvent that was added, but it's the total volume that we have to add these two together. The initial volume plus the amount of solvent added to get a total volume of 50 milliliters. And so the calculation ends up just a little bit different then. So we've got our M1 is still 0 0.40 molar. Our V1 is still 10 milliliters, still solvent for M2, but now our total final volume based on this wording is 50 milliliters. And once again, if you see that your volume goes up by a factor of five, you should realize your molarity is about to go down by a factor of five. And just like 40 divided by five is eight, M2 in this case is going to equal 0 0.08. And we'll add a couple more sig figs on there. 0 0.0800 molar concentration. Cool. And for the most part, that's all there is to dilutions. All right, so now let's talk about solution stoichiometry. And if you recall back from earlier in the course, stoichiometry, what's at its heart is these mole-to-mole -mole ratios. So here we've got a reaction of aqueous lead nitrate with aqueous hydrochloric acid to form a solid precipitate lead to chloride and some aqueous nitric acid. So this is one of those double replacement reactions. In this case, it forms a solid, so it is a precipitation reaction. And But the big thing here is that it, the, uh, the stoichiometry here, it's uh, the mole to mole ratios, it's a one to two to one to two ratio. And so in this problem, we're told that we've got 662.4 grams of lead to nitrate, and it's dissolved in two liters of water. And the question is what volume of six molar hydrochloric acid must be added for it all to react completely. Now here's the truth. So this two liters of water is kind of not really needed. Like we could use it, but we'd be doing more work than we need to. So what we really need to know is figure out how many moles of lead nitrate we've got. And conveniently, I provided you in, on your study guide there with the molecular weight. So of 331.2, had I not provided you with that, obviously you'd be looking up lead and nitrogen oxygen on the periodic table and figuring it out. So, but I didn't want to uh, make that the point of this lesson. So something we've previously studied. So gave you the molecular weight to make this a little bit easier. So because we already know that for every one mole of lead to nitrate, we need two moles 
of HCl. So if in the end I told you we had five moles of lead nitrate, well then we'd need 10 moles of HCl. If we figured out that we had 20 moles of lead nitrate, well then we'd need 40 moles of HCl. It's a one mole to two mole ratio. Well, that's the key then. It's a mole to mole ratio. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many moles of lead nitrate we actually have, because then we know we're gonna need twice as many moles of HCl. And that's where this kind of comes into the stoichiometry place. So, because the, the, at the end, we actually wanna know not the number of moles of HCl, but the volume. And you might recall here that molarity again is the number of moles of solute over the volume in liters. And so now, molarity is our way of relating moles to liters. If we rearrange this and solve for volume, you could say that it's moles over molarity. And so we're gonna take again and take our grams of lead nitrate, convert it to moles, and then based on the one to two ratio, we'll convert that into moles of HCl. And then because we'll know the moles of HCl at that point, and the molarity was given as being six molar HCl, then we'll be able to figure out what volume in liters that corresponds to. That's, that's kind of the idea here. And so again, because we can relate concentration to the number of moles of solute, that's the relevance to stoichiometry. And again, we call this solution stoichiometry. So in this case, we'll start with our 662.4 grams of lead nitrate. And then we'll use its molar mass to convert that into moles. So one mole of lead nitrate weighs 331. And maybe you're noticing that I made the math nice here so that we can see this in our head. So if you notice, 662.4 grams is exactly double the molecular weight. So essentially we have two moles of lead nitrate. And two moles of lead nitrate would need four moles of HCl, but we'll work the dimensional analysis here. And again, the mole to mole ratio comes right from the coefficients to balance reaction. Two moles of HCl react with one mole of the lead nitrate. Cool, now we could stop here, and then once we figure out that we've got our four moles of HCl again, so again, this 662.4 divided by 331.2 is two, times two is four moles of HCl in the end. And we could take that four moles of HCl and divide it by the six molar concentration, and that would get us there. Or we could continue on with the dimensional analysis and just realize that molarity means moles per liter, and so this six, moles of HCl per liter, per one liter essentially, and that just continues it down. We just use dimensional analysis and make it all part of this long uh, calculation here. And so again, 662.4 divided by 331.2 is two moles, times two is four, and four divided by six, that's two thirds, is going to be 0.67 liters of six molar HCl. And so, if you're doing this on multiple choice, obviously if your answer choices were all in milliliters instead of liters, well then you'd have to convert this and multiply by a thousand and get 670 milliliters. So, but in this case, I didn't actually specify a unit and I'm gonna leave it as 0.67 liters. All right, so we'll do one more example with solutions to geometry here. And it's this one here, it's the uh, acid-base neutralization reaction. In the next chapter, we'll study acid and base neutralization reactions in a little more detail. And uh, in this case, we've got phosphoric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide to produce water and a salt here, in this case, sodium phosphate. And we can see that H3PO4, phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide react in a one mole to three mole ratio. That mole to mole ratio, again, is at the heart of our stoichiometry problem here. So in this case, we've got 25 milliliters of 0.2 molar H3PO4, that's given. So in fact, I'll read that question off. What volume of 0.10 molar NaOH must be added to react completely with 25 milliliters of 0.20 molar H3PO4? So again, we got this 25 milliliters of 0.20 molar H3PO4, and the question is what volume of 0.10 molar NaOH uh, must be added to react with the phosphoric acid completely? Cool, so it turns out, I'm gonna show you how to ballpark this in your head to start with. And if you notice, the phosphoric acid is double the concentration of the NaOH. Cool, and if it's double the concentration, well, if they react in a one-to-one -one ratio, well, then I would need twice as much of the NaOH 
being half as concentrated to get the same number of moles, but they don't react in a one-to-one -one ratio. Based on the stoichiometry, I need three times the number of moles of NaOH. So just based on the concentrations, if it was one-to-one, -one, I already need twice the volume of NaOH to get an equal number of moles. But because I actually need three times the number of moles of NaOH, I actually got to triple it further. So it's already double the volume. So instead of 25 milliliters, again, if this was one to one, I would need 50 milliliters of NaOH. But because it's one to three, three times more moles of NaOH, I actually have to triple it further that. And so instead of 50 milliliters, it's going to be 150 milliliters. So if you can't see that, don't worry about it too much because I definitely want to show you the process. The numbers aren't so bad here. So if you can do it in your head, fantastic. So, but even if you can't, or even if you can, you definitely still got to understand the process here. So in this case, once again, molarity equals the moles over the volume in liters. So, and if you rearrange that yet again, so we can say that moles equals molarity times the volume in liters or the volume in liters equals the moles over molarity. So depending on which one you're solving for. And so we can set up this, the, the dimensional analysis on this. So, but students often struggle with the dimensional analysis when it comes to solutions to geometry. So I'm gonna take a slightly different approach. I did the, the dimensional analysis on the last example. I'm gonna use a slightly different approach here. So in the first one here, we've got both the molarity and the volume of H3PO4. And if you've got the molarity and the volume, you can solve for the N here, the number of moles of H2SO4. And if you know the, I'm sorry, H3PO4. If you know the moles of H3PO4, based on the one to three ratio, you could then find the moles of NaOH. And at that point, you'd know the moles of NaOH and you already know it's molarity. And if you know the moles and molarity of something, you can find the volume in liters. So that's kind of the approach I'm going to take. And I, once again, you could set this up with dimensional analysis. So, but sometimes it, students get lost on the reasoning behind it instead of just making things cancel, which ends up being kind of the reasoning. So, but if we actually kind of look at this more of a, a couple different, you know, solutions to algebra equations here. So just based on the definition of molarity. So oftentimes students can kind of see the reasoning. So that's what we're gonna do here. All right, so first one we're gonna do here is calculate the number of moles of H3PO4. And in this case, N equals M times the volume in liters. And so in this case, the molarity again is 0 0.20 molar. And the volume in liters, so to go from milliliters to liters, you gotta divide by a thousand, which just sets you back three decimal places. And so in this case, that's gonna be 0 0.025 liters. And if we use our calculators here, so we've got 0 0.2 times 0 0.025, and we're going to get 0 0.005 moles. We'll worry about sig figs at the end here. So 0 0.005 moles of H3PO4. So from there, we've got to use our mole to mole ratio to turn that into moles of NaOH, the one to three ratio. So then we'll take that number of moles of H3PO4 and multiply it by the mole to mole ratio. So again, moles of NaOH relative to moles of H3PO4. And again, it's just the coefficients in the balanced reaction here. So it's three moles of NaOH for every one mole of H3PO4. And in this case, we can do that math in our head. And that's going to get us 3 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.015 moles of NaOH. Cool. Last but not least, again, the question we're trying to solve is the volume of NaOH. Well, again, to solve for volume, you need to know moles and molarity. And we just solve for the moles. We've known the molarity the whole time. That was given in the problem. And so we're good to go. And so our volume in liters moles over molarity, in this case, 0 0.015. And our molarity again, 0 0.10. And obviously we should get 150 milliliters, which would be 0 0.15 liters, but let's just double check here. So if we do 0 0.015 divided by 0.1, so we get 0.15 liters indeed. Which once again is the same thing as 150 milliliters like we said from the get-go.
Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you give me a like and a share? Best way to make sure that other students see this lesson. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com. A free trial is available.